This is video 7 of the Cadet Training Plan Template Instructional Series. In this video we will be demonstrating the basic features of the initial PO scheduler. It's highly recommended that your 10 supported training days be completed prior to going to the PO scheduler. As you can see here we've got those uh, 10 days scheduled and not only that but we've completed the activity details for each activity as indicated by the green boxes in the, in the name fields. We simply close this form, we're back at the main menu and we click on the PO Scheduler item and we get the PO Scheduler selection screen. We've got three uh, options of uh, schedulers to work with. Uh, I'll just give a quick overview of each one. The initial scheduler, as it indicates here, is a scheduler you'll use first. It's intended uh, for use to do the bulk of your uh, scheduling as it displays 11 weeks of training at a time. Uh, for all training levels and phases. Over here we have the level and phase scheduler which displays an entire years of training for a single level or phase at one time and this tool is for use to fine-tune the training schedule for each level or phase. And finally we have the master and year five scheduler. Uh, this is the scheduling tool that you will use last and you will go to this scheduling tool uh, basically at the start of your next training year and this is the scheduler, scheduler you will use to manage day-to-day uh, -day your training plan. Going into the initial EO scheduler then we'll take a quick uh, look at the overall layout and what we have here. So a basic tour starting with uh, the training level or phase that you want to work with at the time. You simply use the drop down to select the level or phase. Uh, and then you have a PO filter box, so you can choose uh, the PO that you want to start working with. Uh, down here we have the EO information box and scheduling notes for any scheduling notes that pertain to an EO. So if I click on an EO, I get the uh, information about that EO with the performance statement and any scheduling notes that pertain to uh, how that EO needs to be scheduled. Over here we have the uh, the dates for each uh, training week. So we have the, the session number and uh, the training session date here. Uh, the box below is the activity information box. It gives you uh, the list of activities that will take place following this parade date um, and before the next one. Uh, sometimes there's more activities that can be displayed in the box. You simply click in the box and the, the larger view uh, displays. As you can see as soon as I mouse away, uh, that box disappears and goes back to the normal display. Some of these boxes are orange and that's to let you know that in that list of activities there is a uh, supported training day. And if I click on the supported training day where I have uh, my exercise for example, it's telling me that there's some pre-scheduled EOs for M190. Uh, and although I mouse away from that, we have that pre-scheduled information will stick here as well so that as you mouse away if you have to call up that PO and start to schedule you'll still have that information handy on the screen. Uh, from there we have our training levels across the top uh, or phases 1, 2, 3, and 4, and 5 and then we have periods 1, 2, and 3 for each level or phase. Down here we have our special dates buttons uh, for our ACR, COs, parades and stand downs uh, and we'll be taking a look at those in a minute but this is uh, the location we had shown you in an earlier video they had moved from uh, the tab under um, unit activities. This date selection screen works much like you've already seen in the optional activities uh, screen. Uh, you simply uh, look at when you want to have your CO's parades and uh, in the event field then uh, go to that and double click. If you see colored date fields it just indicates that there are other activities scheduled following that date and if you want to see that uh, information or detail you just double click on that colored date field and the other events uh, are listed. Click OK to make that disappear and continue on with your date selections. In this case I'm selecting the uh, first parade night of every month. What I've indicated here is I'm simply having CO's parades on these dates um, and I would do it this way if I was planning to have my CO's parade in either the opening or closing um, parade. 
as part of that. Um, so far, I have not indicated that I want to occupy any time on the training schedule. If you would like to occupy time on the training schedule, that's where you would use these period selection options. And you simply click in the drop down and choose the option that you would like. In this case, I'm going to select the first period. And then what will happen in the PO scheduler, uh, the uh, selection that you make here will be blocked off uh, in the scheduler, uh, which is a key reason why you want to do this before you get into too much scheduling. Once your um, seals parade selections are done, you simply hit the return button and your scheduler is updated and you can see that our seals parades are in there. Another thing you should be doing at this time is taking a look at your stand downs. As you can see, Christmas and New Year's Day uh, fall on my parade day and the template recognizes that and has created an automatic stand down. Um, I also wanna take into account any other key stand down dates such as spring break. And I'm gonna go in here and select the date that is affected by spring break. And once my stand downs are done, I can simply hit close form. Um, notice with in this screen here, because I've got 11 weeks of training at one time, uh, and here's my scroll bar. If I uh, click um, below or above the uh, scroll bar itself in the track, I will advance the uh, scheduler 11 weeks at a time. If I click on the up or down arrows themselves, I will advance the scheduler one week at a time. And here you can see my spring break uh, stand down is in here. Another scrolling option I have is uh, simply using the uh, mouse wheel. And the mouse wheel will allow me to, as long as I'm clicked on the screen, will allow me to scroll up and down the screen, which is a nice handy feature to have. Um, two other things that I need to look at then are pre-scheduled EOs, any EOs that must be scheduled before an exercise, and we did touch on that briefly. If I click on the uh, orange box of the supported training days, it will let me know if I have any pre-scheduled EO requirements for that activity, and here I have one. Uh, and it happens to be uh, PO 190, which I already have selected, and so I need to schedule these EOs before that date. Uh, so I simply um, start doing that scheduling. And already you can see that as I'm scheduling EOs, it's scheduling from the top of the list. So I don't have to do anything as long as I, I want to schedule from the top of the list. And then the next class and the next class, I just keep double clicking in the period where I want that class to appear. Um, also, you're seeing that all the related EOs to uh, the current PO that I have uh, up here in the filter are now highlighting. Now, uh, one thing I want to check is if I've scheduled these pre-assigned EOs correctly. Again, I, I click on the orange activity box uh, for the appropriate exercise. And in yellow, I'll, it, it'll find those pre-scheduled EOs if they have been scheduled and it shows in yellow the ones that are um, scheduled correctly and any that are scheduled incorrectly in this case meaning after the exercise will appear in red. So uh, a handy method of error checking and I can just click on that EO and drag it up to where it should be and um, check again and yes those EOs are all scheduled correctly. Uh, final thing that you should uh, look at doing before you get into your scheduling in bulk is um, your scheduling of PSRY. This message is only to remind you that one module of PSRY can be scheduled in a particular session or day at a time. Uh, I need to schedule um, module one and module three before October 31st and two and four before December 31st. So as long as I um, fit those in there. So I've got one module scheduled on this day, uh, three, even though it's one period, I need to schedule it on a different day. So you see, I can schedule something on the middle of the list. I simply have to click on it 
uh, and then double click where I want it to be otherwise it will always schedule from the top of the list uh, and then 2 and 4 simply need to be before December 31st and again each module has to be on a separate day or session well, uh, with those things uh, done, I'm really ready to begin my scheduling of uh, the remainder of my training plan. And I simply select the PO that I want to work with um, because these, especially mandatory POs, are going to be scheduled in order. You're going to be filling from the top of the list. Just like that. So double clicking in the periods where you want those EOs to be placed. And again, that PO highlighting is keeping that visibility for me at all times where all the EOs related to that PO are scheduled. If I want to turn off that highlighting uh, briefly, I can uh, just simply click on one of the highlighted periods and it turns it off and then I can turn it back on. If I want to click on another um, EO, it will highlight the EOs that are related uh, to that uh, PO and again I can turn that highlighting off. Go to your next uh, PO that you want to schedule. Again it will fill from the top of the list and simply start double clicking where you want to schedule those EOs. We will continue this instructional segment in our next video.